very much, Mr. Chair. Distinguished delegates, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for allowing me to speak today on behalf of the Civil Society Task Force. As the Young Gas Outcome Document recognises, civil society and affected populations play an important role in addressing and countering the world drug problem. We should be enabled to participate in the formulation, implementation and evaluation of drug policies. Hello, I'm Peter Sharoshi, I'm the editor of the Drug Reporter website and I'm sitting here at the Vienna International Centre at the Commission on Narcotic Drugs Corridors together with Jamie Bridge who is the can we say outgoing uh, yeah. chairperson yeah. of, Two the, more days. of the VN, VN GOC? Mm -hmm. So, how does it make you feel to be in on the, in the end of your period term? Yeah, it's um, I've really enjoyed it, and it's it's a it, it's been a challenge, but it's also been a great opportunity. I've been the chair for five years, so that's the and I've served the maximum amount of terms, so um, I'm not running for election again. But yeah, I'm very grateful, very grateful, and I think we've done a lot of good stuff together. Yeah. Can you highlight a few? So obviously I was the chair for the high level segment in 2019. So we worked with the Vienna NGO committee, worked with the New York NGO committee, and we created the civil society task force and we selected speakers for that meeting. And there was a great, the whole civil society engagement at that meeting was strong and was really, really positive. So I'm very proud of that. We realized that our membership was lower in some regions, uh, particularly Asia and Africa. And we made an extra special effort to engage members from those areas. And uh, we created working groups in Asia and Africa. And both of those working groups created a common position, civil society, common position on drugs. That's been really positive. Um, and I think now the Africa group is actually going to form in its own right and is going to become an Africa Union civil society platform, which is really exciting. So, yeah, we've done, we've done some, it's been a busy five years. It's been very good. Plus, obviously, the COVID pandemic, you know, we navigated that whole shift to online engagement and, uh, and that's, that was a huge challenge, but, but I think we, I think we handled it. Yeah. As, as one of the, let's say, veterans or seasoned visitor of the CND, mm. I can tell you that there is a huge change mm. in how NGOs are uh, received here. Because when we first we came here, it was a hostile atmosphere and yeah. now we, we see that it's, it's quite NGO friendly. Mm. Or, it's, it's I think, yeah, to be. but I think there's still, the challenges are still there and I don't think we should ever take our position here for granted. You know, it's something we have to continuously defend, but you're right. I think we do have a very good level of engagement here in Vienna, especially when you hear horror stories from other parts of the UN or other countries where civil society is being shut down very harshly. We haven't seen that here in Vienna and hopefully we don't. So we, we can see the results here as NGO or press being attending this event, but what did it take for you? Like, was it many battles to fight behind the doors? Like, did you mm. have to negotiate with hostile governments or? I mean, it's not so much battles, but it's definitely a lot of advocacy. We have to do a lot of um, engagement with member states that are less comfortable with strong civil society engagement. Um, sometimes we have an NGO that wants to speak and, and what they want to say is particularly uncomfortable for, for a government to hear. So we have to do a lot of, yeah, just, uh, it's not really a battle, but it's more just um, trying to keep the peace, trying to make sure that things are done in a respectful way, um, trying to make sure that everything, you know, all the civil society engagement here is constructive because sometimes you can come and make a lot of noise, but not, not really get heard. And I think that's what, we've, uh, that's what we've been trying to make sure doesn't happen. So yeah, it's, it's definitely not a battle because like, like you say, this, this place is, is increasingly civil society friendly, but we do have to continuously be, you know, be watching to make sure that that space doesn't get closed, yeah. Can you shortly introduce us to the VNGOC, like what's its mission? And yeah. it, can you talk, talk about the membership? Yeah, so the Vienna NGO Committee, it's actually, this year's its 40th anniversary. So it's, uh, it was founded in 1983. And its role is, is to represent civil society and to open spaces for civil society here at CND. And also to just to help civil society understand how things work here at CND. 
So we're really kind of like the, the link between the two. And we don't, we don't try to speak on behalf of civil society. Our job is to make the space and then the NGOs can use that space themselves. So we've got 360 members from 100 countries all around the world. And they, they range from harm reduction NGOs to drug law reform NGOs uh, to prevention, treatment, recovery, criminal justice NGOs. There's a huge, huge range of different perspectives. And the, the VNGOC's job is to make sure that they all can get into this building, that they can speak at the plenary and host side events, and that they understand you know, how to, how to advocate, how to use the CND for their own work. What are the remaining barriers to break down for civil society here at the UN, especially CND? I would say, I think one of the biggest barriers is that there are still some member states that are very um, uneasy about our engagement here. So I think there's still a lot of advocacy we have to do to, to win some governments over. Even in the last few weeks, we know there's been pretty hard debates um, here in Vienna about civil society engagement. I think the other battle is we have the space, but I think half the battle now is, is, is going the next step. Like how do we turn this advocacy that we do here in Vienna into real change at the national level? And how do we take what we do here and take it home with us? How does each NGO go back to their home country and, and use the CND to change what they're doing? That's obviously, in some places, that's very challenging. What are the main issues this year at the CND? especially with regard to advocacy? I think the main issue so far has been looking to next year, because next year we have the high-level meeting, uh, the midterm review, as it's, as it's called in 2024. So I think a lot of the energy so far has been just going to make sure that civil society is, is included in that whole process, and, and we are, and we're very thankful for that. I think the other issues, this is the first CND where we have hundreds and hundreds of civil society participants physically here in Vienna, uh, first time since uh, March 2020. So I think there's also some adjusting back to, to that way of working because um, you know, a lot of things like the side events and things like that have been online for the last two years. So uh, yeah, just kind of welcoming everyone back and also just readjusting to you know, what, what needs to happen when there's this many NGOs um, at a meeting. A lot of people are talking about the changing narrative here. If you mm. listen to the, the speeches, mm. uh, how do you feel about that? Yeah, no, it has. I mean, what's interesting is when someone, I was talking to um, a former chair, actually, uh, of the, the NGOC, Michel Perron, and he hasn't been here since 2014. And it's, it's, it's then that people can really see how much this place has changed. Uh, when you come every year, sometimes you don't notice the steps to, in, in that progress. But when you compare what we've been hearing today from the governments and, and from the other speakers, and you compare that to five years ago, 10 years ago, it's, it's a world different, you know? So there's been huge progress. And I think civil society has a huge role to play or had a huge role to play in that. Um, it's moving forward, but obviously not as fast as a lot of people would, would like. What would you recommend to your successor? Um, yeah, just, I mean, I think there's, there's so much like to just, we had just have to carry on kind of fighting the good fight. And, um, you know, but I think the key thing is building those relationships with the key people here, key member states, key kind of policy makers, UNODC officials. When you're representing the Vienna NGO committee, you're, rep you're really representing kind of, or you're trying to open space on behalf of the whole of civil society. So you've got to have those relationships and keep those relationships positive and, um, and just enjoy it because it is, it is genuinely good fun. Thank you so much for the interview and thank you for your work because I think it really did make a difference. Oh, thank you very much. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.